Hey kids! Hey. Now, now we're cooking. cooking! Welcome to our third episode this week for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. My name is Ann Annie. I'm Grandma Jane. Yes, and since it's a, a lot more difficult this year to enjoy baseball either as a participant or as a fan, um, we're bringing baseball and all of its treats to you. Um, I shouldn't say all of its treats, but some of those things that we probably don't have except when we go to a stadium or a game. So first we played, or we made our uh, delicious caramel corn. We called it our cob corn after a wonderful Thai cob, um, an outfielder and uh, played many years with the Detroit, Detroit Tigers. And next we made macho nachos in honor of Jose Bautista. I, for, I neglected to say all the teams that Bautista has paid, played for. Listen to this. Baltimore Orioles, Tampa Bay Devil Rays, Kansas City Royals, Pittsburgh Pirates, Toronto Blue Jays, Atlanta Braves, New York Mets, and the Phillies. Jeez. He's an excellent, excellent player. So in your in your honor, Jose, we make we make the, uh, those wonderful macho nachos, which, Jane, tell okay. them what you're about to do. Okay. I'm going to take them out of the oven at this time. Should I take the caramel corn first or? Whichever you prefer. Oh, we'll just take that out and show it how that turns out. Just so out. happens our caramel corn is done. It was it's a little after three, so that's in good shape. And even though it hasn't been too awfully long as our cheese melted on the oh, macho nachos, it's nachos. It's it's wonderful. It's and good. that's really all it needs to have happen, kids, because the meat's already been done. The other stuff just needed to get warm and the cheese needed to melt. So what are you going to do to dress it up then? Okay, I always like to put a little avocado on it. And if you don't put it on it like this, you can always make a little guacamole, you know, and they can have that on it too. Well, but for I'm kids gonna, that don't know, yeah, I'm guacamole gonna, is largely avocado. Yeah. You just didn't know probably what it's it was. It's made into a dip. Mm -hmm. But I like avocados very healthy for you. And um, you see a lot of times I'm in delis and stuff with sandwiches now, turkey and avocado. Yes, you do. Or, yeah, it's a big trend right now. Mm -hmm. And then next, I'll put the tomatoes that I diced up. Those tomatoes it. look really fresh, yes, and really grown. sweet and yummy. Yep. Look how see when they're really deep red like yeah. that, kids. Oh, usually they're just sweet, you can eat them like an apple. And then if you like, maybe I'll put them on half because I know some people don't like olives. I, I uh, slice up some black olives. And then the next thing you can do, I put some... Uh, you mean there's more? There's more. You might want to put sour cream on half too. He doesn't like sour cream. Okay. <laughs> we'll just put sour cream on half of it then. The He's olive kind or the olive side or the non-olive side? Non or on the olive side because okay. he doesn't like olives either. Okay. Uh, He's crazy. <laughs> oh, I don't yes. care for black olives either. With squiggle He's and drizzle. He's a psycho about sour cream. Squiggle and drizzle. I yeah. like that, Jane, for correcting us on that. Yep. And then how you can do hot sauce, whatever. You can do, or just let them do their own salsa, whatever. Just dollop some salsa dollop, in there. Dollop, here, yeah. here and there. Well, kids, we talk and talk about texture, colors, and flavors. Now, for heaven's sakes, this certainly has all the check boxes checked. Good that's Lord. Nice. Jane, you'll have to show that up closer to the camera. Mm -hmm. That is a work of art. <laughs> and yeah, we're going to dig into this. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Jane, that's just beautiful. All right, just we'll get up some plates and we'll dig in, all right? <laughs> sure, I'll get some plates out and then I'll start talking about our next item. There should not be a negative shift in that bunch. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any uh I don't see any unclad chips in there. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you see now how we lure our tapers and filmers here. We just get tell them what we're gonna make that week and then sometimes they, they agree to come up come upon us. But what I'm gonna make today for the next item for uh, on the neck for this next episode, now that we've got out our other two um, items. I'm going to make sliders. We're going to call them Jackie sliders in the honor of Jackie Robinson, number 42, the number that's been retired across the board on all uniforms and all sports in honor of Jackie Robinson, who, thanks to Branch Rickey um, and the Dodgers bringing him in um, as the first black professional baseball player, we now have seen many, many others. Um, follow in his steps and the courage it took for Jackie 
the stuff he went through. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch the movie 42. Excellent movie about Jackie Robinson. Um, everyone did a great job on uh, portraying their characters in that movie as well. And excellent, excellent movie. Um, but Jackie, of course, I think, if I recall, for this is just from the movie, I think he actually lettered in three or four sports in college. Baseball was just one of them. And so this guy was an all-around excellent athlete. But we wanted to call him Jackie Sliders because one of the things Jackie was really, really, really uh, famous for was his steals and his slides in doing that. Um, Jackie had 197 career steals. Um, 19 of those were stolen bases to home plate, which is rarely attempted by many professional ball players. And then he had an extra one during a World Series game, but 19 of them were regular season, and one of them stealing home plate. And that's just absolutely phenomenal. But he was a hell of a hitter. He was an excellent player. But what I admired about him most, or Jane and I both, mm -hmm. was his courage and his convictions inside um, that helped us all come to appreciate him for other his other character traits and his wonderful, wonderful athletic ability. So in your honor, Jackie, we're gonna make sliders, okay? Right. Now for today, we're gonna make ham and cheese sliders. You can make them on any kind of dinner roll, but a lot of recipes out there and the ones we prefer are that get the Hawaiian, King's Hawaiian or another kind of sweet roll. They just end up really tasting awfully good. And what you're going to want to do is get a 9 by 13 pan and you're going to want to grease it, okay? Either spray it with, with some kind of nonstick coating spray or you're going to want to grease it up with some Crisco or butter, okay? These little babies are wanting to stick to the bottom of plastic, or the plastic here. And obviously we aren't going to want to cut all these separately. What a pain, we aren't gonna do that. We're gonna do our best to cut these, these buns between the tops and the bottoms all the way down the whole rectangle. So in other words, we're gonna try to cut down the middle of this all the way across. So we've got the whole bottom on the bottom, then we layer it with stuff, and then we put the top back on, okay? So while I'm trying to attempting to do this well, I'm gonna ask Jane to mince me up some onion there. And so make it as fine of pieces as you can, if you would. And of course with bread, we use a serrated knife, okay? Serrated meaning it has the, the little blady scissory things at the bottom, okay? And I tell you, these things just melt in your mouth. I tell you. They are great. They are so good. And again, kids, this this will come in time. Um, when we've made them different times for elk parties and things, we find that if we've got a lot of them to make, I would have gotten out my electric knife because that really works really slow. Oh, yes. You have. I do have an electric knife, but a lot of kids might not at home, so I wanted to use just a a, a, a regular serrated bread knife, but. You might want to use an electric knife as you become more skilled because that just zzz, zips right through that bread, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'm going to start melting a half a cup of butter and as you know now that is one stick, correct kids? Half a cup is one stick. And when that's melted, I'm gonna add the onion that's gonna be chopped really, really fine, or we call minced. Jane's kind enough to do that for me. Then I'm gonna put in eventually three tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We're gonna put in a tablespoon of poppy seed and a couple of teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, okay? And I put the poultry seed over here. And I'll say, when I make these exact same things, 
Yeah. I use yellow mustard, so you don't have to use Dijon. Ah. Just the regular mustard. Yeah. And do you prefer that? Why? Or just because you don't have any Dijon at home? Well, I don't have any, but because I don't like Dijon. Okay. Is the reason I don't have any. Okay, so like Nick, Megan just pointed out, if you want to use regular mustard, like most, no, a lot of houses have regular yellow mustard. A lot of houses don't have Dijon on hand. So go ahead and like Megan said, that's a good tip, Megan. Go ahead and go ahead and put in your three tablespoons of, of regular mustard instead. So this is melting. How much minced? Oh. I think that'll be plenty. Okay. And when why don't I bring it to you? Okay. And go ahead and put that right in there. It says the recipe says one onion, kids, but this was a really big onion. Really big onion. So I've also in a pinch used the dried minced onion you can get in the uh -huh. Uh, seasoning section? Yeah. Yes. If you don't want to cut up an onion or whatever. Absolutely. I'm always about easiness. Yes, a lot I of a I lot of them. homes have minced dry onion in their spice cabinet so, or seasoning cabinet kit, so you can certainly do that as well. Put in the minced if you don't have any onion to chop up or your, your caregivers don't want you to use a knife yet based on your age or your skill. And talk about a uh, spice rack and all that. I went through mine and got the expired out. And I was surprised. I don't even know seasoning. Well, I guess, the bottom. of course, they do. Yeah, they do. Well, I but I know I you don't. I probably have a bunch of them that are expired. Yeah, I had a bunch. I love chili powder. Mm -hmm. And I had some that were expired amongst the good stuff. So, And so if you do that for your mom or anything, be sure to set them out that are expired. But don't throw them out, maybe, because then she'll want to replenish them before she has to use them. But it's or just not think of much, or dad, or whoever. Yeah. I always have a bunch yeah. of seasonings that I have like two or three of too, because mm -hmm. I'll go to the store and think about getting them, and then I don't remember that I already have some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna put three tablespoons of Dijon in here. But some of them are like 2022, 20, so yeah. you, you know, it's quite a while. Odds are, if you use it much, you're gonna use it up. So, so Jane, while I'm doing this, tell us what your background is at going to baseball games and all of that well my first year at the airlines we went to we had overnight in phoenix and somebody at the bar gave a flight attendant some tickets and we got to sit in the press box seats so i mean really good seats and um watch the cubs play the razorbacks and they the razorbacks won that year world series that was really fun uh i went to a twins game when i was younger and just last year our crew got um our trip Part of it canceled and we went to a Cubs game in Chicago. Awesome. We had to take a bus like to it but there's all those beautiful brownstone buildings along the way that are fun to look at and I just it was like a picture perfect day. Josh can you get this for me? I had, I had my nephew. I think they week. lost to the Phillies but it was who you know who cares it was just wonderful. It's just so fun to be at a yeah. live baseball game. The atmosphere was it, so. It's the atmosphere yeah. that's so much fun. And the the food, you know, and it's just fun. Okay, then it needs two teaspoons of Worcestershire or more if you like. I'm gonna put in a little more because I'm a Worcestershire lover. Try to say Worcestershire 20 times really fast. <laughs> uh. Yeah, when I looked up Jackie, he remained married to his wife, Rachel, and they had three children. That movie was excellent. And yeah, that doesn't just get you. And his full name was Jack Roosevelt. Oh, really? Robinson. Cool. And they called him Jackie, if I'm not mistaken. Quite the guy. I looked that up a little while ago. But in addition to his steals, my gosh, he was an excellent hitter. Had a ton of home runs, ton of RBIs. Just awesome. Thank you, Josh. Some real natural talents out there. 
Well, and I could get over how, how he played like everything. Yeah. I mean, my gosh. I took my kids to a pro bay, a game when they, they loved the Cleveland Indians and that's when the Twins played them and that was bad. They got bad, you know, that was cool. And I thought, look at those guys, they look like bionic, like bodies or something. How can they hit that that hard and fast and far? It, it just blows me away. You should really experience it sometime. Mm -hmm. it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let that simmer on the stove a bit. And the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up a little bit of regular mayo with a little bit of salad dressing because I want a little tang in there. And I'm not going to butter the buns. So, nana nana poo poo. You want to try the popcorn? Some people might think you have to. Yeah, it's warm still, yum yummy. And gooey. And Jane, on your way back by, will you please grab me then the ham and the Swiss that's laying right on top of a shelf straight ahead. I wanted to leave it in the fridge in the as long fridge. as possible. Okay. Yeah. I think I just okay. laid it in there rather than putting it in a dryer or in yep. a drawer dryer. Okay, now I'm gonna spread this mayo-y salad dressing mixture. After I mix the two together, I'm gonna spread it with my little thin spatula on the bottom half of the bun. And again, you can slather that with as much as this goop as you like. If you don't like this goop, <laughs> a friend of ours husband, our good friend Sally's husband Greg, hates mayo. So he never wants to eat anything that we've made here at, at our cooking show that has mayo in it. That's crazy. We think, well, he's quite limited in some of the things he gets to eat, unfortunately. He's a meat and a potato guy. Here. I'll put that aside in the event we do make some more. I did ask Jane if we could get two bags just in the event. We had a large crowd that likes sliders, Josh. <laughs> Jane, would you want to, while I'm doing this, sure. give that, keep that yep. stir in a little bit so I don't end up with anything... And because I'm gonna to touch these buns again, I'm gonna get my hands washed. I'm gonna to be touching some uh, meat and cheese here. How does taste the nachos? Good. Good. Right. All right. I'm trying to save them for the picture. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, shoot. So I've been grabbing like underneath and... Oh, they're so pretty. Yeah, those pictures go. <laughs> they're just pretty. Also, if there's kids who can't use the stove, a lot of times, I'll melt mine just in the microwave. Mm -hmm. It works just as good, but yeah. Lord of living. No, my hands are greasy and I can't get this. Would someone be kind enough or pass it on? Now I'm going to lay pieces of ham across this bottom 12. And you can try to roll them up and try to make sure there's one on every little slice if you'd like. So let's do that just in the case that that's how you want to do it. Or you can lay it just across the way it is because we're going to cut it that way. The buns haven't really been cut all the way yet, see, all the way through. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and fold these over. And I'm going to do this 12 times because there are 12 buns. And once I get meat and cheese over all of this, then what we're going to do is we're going to put two thirds of that mixture, pour it over. Thank you to whomever got the The Swiss open. Is that you again, Joshua or Jane? Jane. Um, what is in this sauce again? It is a half a cup of butter. Okay. And an onion minced. And three tablespoons of Dijon or whatever okay. amount of flavored mustard you'd like. Other than that, like Jane, like Megan pointed out. Smells good. A tablespoon of poppy seed. And a couple of teaspoons of Worcestershire. Good. Okay. Good combination. Now what I'm going to do is cut 
these pieces and fourths because they're almost perfect that way. They, the size is just almost perfect to cut a piece like this in fourths, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to keep it warm until I do the pouring. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to pour two thirds of this over, perfect, over this. And I think I'm going to use a different spoon as well just to do the spooning. Yeah, yeah, we'll mark it. Because I want to make sure the poppy seed stays not all in one spot, too. Poppy seed, I wouldn't have expected in there. Would you? Do you use it in anything? Like lemon last cake? Actually, we had, when she was at my house and she made these for us the first time, mm -hmm. we had to go buy poppy seeds because I yeah. never used them. Yeah. And that's the only thing since I've ever used them for. Well, uh, there's a Vienna bread recipe we're going to make to, uh, when we get into the tailgating season. Um, <laughs> that's delicious. I love tailgating. And that has, that has poppy seed. Yeah, now that you've watched a few of these episodes, kids, you probably can kind of guess where we're headed in a lot of weeks with themes. Mm -hmm. We might surprise you once in a while, but... Okay, I've put approximately two thirds of this concoction on top of the bottom of these buns. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna put the tops of the buns back on. <laughs> and I'm going to take this pastry brush and now I'm going to brush the remaining third on the top. And these go in a 350 oven for about 15 minutes. And kid, like I said, we got an extra thing of buns. Because I said, Jane, I don't know how many are coming tomorrow, but if the right people come, I think we're gonna need another batch. Even if we have to make it mm. off air. Yeah, we could try that. So would you oh, wow. turn, please, the oven up to 350, and while, go ahead and hit bake, mm -hmm. and then and use the up thing to go up to 350, and then hit start. Okay. Pretty soon you'll know my kitchen better than I. Know, I know, it's almost like my stove, but a little different. Well, they are all similar, yeah. so I don't mean to sound bossy. No, no. I, I just think if I were standing there, I'd want somebody to tell me, so I don't think... <laughs> That's fine. It's like, it's like we're only here once a week. How did she say what I did that last week again? <laughs> now, if any of this goo drizzles over the side, I try to kind of brush it back up on top. Do you eat them with a fork? Can you use your fingers? Does, does that bake? I would kind get of messy and just use my hands. Yeah. Because <laughs> that kind of bakes on there, yeah. right? Oh, you guys. It, oh. It's almost like a gummy crust on it. Yeah. Well, Jackie, I always get to name the episodes, buddy, and I tell you, I just think these are the best, and so that was a huge honor. Yeah. <laughs> that I made. You think he was that the best? That Jane too. let me name these, the Jackie <laughs> Robinson, because I knew she would. She loves you too, buddy. So we're gonna put this in a an oven when it goes to 350, but it's perfect time for. Oh. The, yeah. Seventh inning stretch. <laughs> okay. Hit it. Take, Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back because it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. up to 350 and in the meantime we're going to be able to go ahead and 
um, sign off. And again, we'll pull these out next episode again. The next episode's going to be really something. Let's hope it works. But at any rate, <laughs> Jane, in signing off, what would you say? Well, go to a ball game if you get a chance to, and have a little fun, eat some caramel corn, make some of our recipes, and have just be good. And we love you. And if you can't go to a ball game this summer, again, try to find some outside activities. Otherwise, try cooking or baking, like mm -hmm. we've been trying to teach you, and uh, that'll help pass the hours. And you know what? We talked to some ladies at the store yesterday that said, you know what? We're excited about this this particular show because. We, we don't think there's any reason our kids can't start dinner now or even have dinner ready for us by the time they're done with your show. I said, well, we like your confidence. So at any rate, thank you to all viewers that have so far subscribed to us. We ask that you share our, our link or, or share how to subscribe to our show. Again, we hope you're finding it entertaining, if nothing else, um, and even a little bit informational, okay? Yeah. So until next time, we hope to see you on Now, now We're Cooking. cooking.